A fine summer's day in these islands is a rare thing. One of the reasons for their rarity is the great gift of water, borne by rain. Water that eventually finds its way into streams and ponds. And gives life to such a variety of living things. Among them is a creature which is perhaps the very essence of summer. For only then are we likely to see them. If we're lucky, it stops long enough to spread its wings and let us wonder at its skill and beauty. The dragonfly. But this airborne creature begins its life as a nymph, whose form beneath the water has inspired the designers of Hollywood's greatest monsters. Savages with a killer kiss. Unchanged for 300 million years, they are living fossils. Although dragonflies hunt in woods, preying on other insects, it is by the water where they mate and breed that we normally get to see them. But at this time of year, early spring, they are nowhere to be seen. Last year's brood are still fattening themselves underwater, perhaps to become food themselves, for the chicks that this coot will rear. For food and family are the two driving forces here, forces that will shape territories and boundaries so that mating can begin. If the treatment of the female coot seems less than chivalrous, spare a thought for her neighbours a few feet away. Scores of male toads will attempt to mate a much smaller number of females. In the melee, the females have been known to drown. Here the force for family becomes a frenzy. Nature provides endless varieties of life forms, each with its own particular characteristics and niche in the system. A freshwater pond, on close examination, has as much variety as any cosmopolitan city. As in any city, in the murkier quarters, lurks menace. This stickleback has strayed down the wrong alley. As deadly as any switchblade are the dragonfly's killer lips, impaling their victim on two grasping hooks. The nymph's abdominal breathing system, extracting oxygen through its gut lining, pumps constantly. Almost in rhythm with its jaws. Each successive victim hastens the day the nymph will grow large enough to escape the pond.
This feathery looking tail belongs to its cousin, the damselfly nymph, also biding its time on the lookout for likely meals. Meanwhile, above, they are being targeted themselves as the coots browse the pond, selecting the richest hunting grounds in anticipation of the arrival of their young. Early damselflies, already emerged from the water, are on the wing. Despite appearances, the pond is a scene of mounting passion and competition as the damselflies play the mating game. Vying for the attention of the female, the males put on an impressive display. Posing like a peacock on his perch, this male attempts to interest this female. This time he was successful and they lock in a romantic embrace. They will remain in this heart shape for some time. This ensures no rival male can sneak away with the female before she is ready to lay her eggs. She searches for the best spot. She will carefully place the eggs one by one using a blade at the end of her tail to prepare the stem. She does this entirely submerged, watched over by her partner. Exhausted and vulnerable, her nuptial bliss came to a sticky end. But the mission is complete. The next generation are on the way. Spring changes into summer and the warm perfumed days at the pond are a hive of activity for insects, plants and birds, all busily searching for food to feed their young. Like this dad chick chasing a damselfly. The dragonfly eggs laid two seasons ago have grown in their submarine environment among the reeds into mature nymphs. making them a handsome prize for a hungry coot and its family. Despite their reputation as aerialists, the years spent underwater constitute the majority of the dragonfly's life. This nymph has now been in this pond for nearly two years. Having fed well over the last few months, it is as big as it's going to get. It will not feed again until it is on the wing. No longer able to breathe through its gut, the hawker nymph's body begins to change, preparing for a life breathing air. If the weather remains favorable, tonight will be its last in the pond. Under cover of darkness on a still evening, a miraculous change is about to take place. As the nymph emerges from its aquatic home, it is slowed as it is forced to carry its own body weight for the first time. It uses spurs to grasp the sedge grass and haul itself towards the next stage in its life. If danger threatens, the nymph can still beat a hasty retreat to the safety of the pond. But once the eyes turn milky, there is no turning back. The nymph inflates its thorax, splitting its old skin. First, the head comes free. Then, segment by segment, the body emerges from the old skin.
The nymph's creeping existence in the depths of the pond is now a thing of the past. The empty husk is all that remains of its old life. The dragonfly pumps fluid into the veins of its wings. They unfurl. Normally, this happens under cover of darkness, but tonight, the moonlight reveals their delicate structure and engineers dream of lightness and strength. The identical design that gave the dragonfly's prehistoric relatives wingspans the size of a sparrowhawk. In the cold morning air, the dragonfly will exercise an ability that it shares with us, the ability to generate heat. By shivering, the massive flight muscles occupying one third of the insect's body are warmed in preparation for the race for food. A final wipe of the eyes and it takes to the air for the first time. Dragonflies are fiercely territorial once they've claimed the patch of waterway. They patrol regularly, looking out for prey, which are taken in flight. This watery fiefdom affords the male dragonfly plenty of opportunity to pursue the females. Dragonflies are amongst the fastest and most agile of insects. They can fly backward, turn as if on a pivot, and even somersault in combat. They have been clocked at 35 miles an hour and can carry more than double their own weight in flight, a feat unmatched by any man-made flying machine. Despite intense study by military designers, these dog-fighting flying fossils have not yielded their secrets. Their excellent vision, evolved for hunting, serves them well in their new surroundings, allowing them to fly in between the reeds without crashing. Watching these remarkable creatures, it is easy to see how they become objects of fascination for their enthusiasts. In order to see sights such as these, some dragonfly watchers will literally drop everything and travel hundreds of miles to a reported sighting of a rare species. Fast flowing rivers are not the usual hatching place for the hawk or dragonfly. But species that do favour well oxygenated waters are the demoiselle, named poetically, the bandit and the beautiful. These species are highly territorial. These delicate, iridescent insects put on a stunning aerial display. Their in-flight acrobatics are an aggressive fight for supremacy, yet none are injured. These dueling dancers assess each other's right to mate by judging skill on the wing. This graceful behaviour, avoiding physical contact, allows the loser to dance again unscathed.
Having dispensed with his rivals, the intrepid male faces a tougher test to impress the females. Could a strong backstroke be enough to win him the adoration of a mate? Recklessly throwing himself into the torrent, this amorous male is demonstrating that this is the spot to lay. The undulating movements made by the male are not for mutual gratification, but are an attempt to scoop out the seed of any who have previously mated her. The male's organ is equipped like a miniature Swiss Army knife, with attachments evolved solely for this task. His paternity is not yet assured. He keeps a vigil over the female, ensuring that no rogue males intrude. She safely deposits the eggs undisturbed, protected by her mate from any unwanted attention. The long hazy days of summer encourage the normally reclusive grass snake out of her hiding place to bask in the warming rays by the pond. The hawk or dragonfly has also found itself a mate. It grips the female by the scruff of the neck with claspers that fit like a key in a lock. This prevents relations between different species. But before the male even gets started, he transfers sperm from a reservoir to his sexual organ at the base of the abdomen. The female wraps her legs around him and bends her body under his. There, she collects a little packet of sperm. The eggs embedded in the stems of water plants usually hatch after two weeks. What emerges from the egg is rarely seen. A maggot-like creature which, after hatching, burrows out of the stem and moults immediately into a fully functioning miniature nymph. Vulnerable with its shell still soft, many are consumed by passing fish, toads and mature dragonfly nymphs. Cannibalism is a real danger. To a large nymph, a small one is just another meal. Horrific sounding, this behaviour is an efficient way of ensuring that, if food is short, at least some nymphs will grow to maturity. Above the water, these butterflies are sipping summer sweet nectar and pollinating flowers. The coots, which nested earlier in the year, now have two healthy chicks who are in constant need of food. Adult dragonflies and nymphs are a rich source of protein for the rapidly growing young. Under the watchful eye of a parent, the chicks go on their first outing into the pond, their first taste of life outside the nest. Despite the summer warmth, this is a brief foray for the chicks, as their thin, immature plumage is a poor insulator and they could easily catch a chill. She carefully wipes the water from her own feathers on returning to the nest, so she can better warm her chicks.
the dab chick too has offspring to maintain and is kept occupied in the search for food. Summer is drawing to a close. As the plants prepare for the coming autumn, the darter is the last of the dragonfly family to mate and breed. This somewhat bumpy ride for the female, known as flying in tandem, allows this male total confidence that the eggs laid will be his. While others that we have seen are content merely to stand guard, this controlling male does not let go until he has seen his eggs safely deposited in the water. Autumn may be a time of harvest and plenty, a season of mist and mellow fruitfulness, yet it is a turning point in the dragonfly year. This delicate insect is not robust enough to undertake a long seasonal migration. The dragonfly is master of a small domain. Its habitat is only a few miles square, and it is within this space that it is born, will live, and ultimately die. Unlike the swallows, the dragonflies do not head south to overwinter in warmer climes. It is the cold that will mean the end for the hawker dragonfly. The summer's crop of adults are now fodder for others so that they may survive the harshness of the coming winter. Nothing goes to waste when we talk of fossils, we usually mean historic creatures like dinosaurs, unable to keep pace with the changing world. The damsels and dragons have seen them all come and go. They are still here, one of nature's longest running success stories.